All right, YouTube, welcome back to the channel. So we're back on the dyno again. Uh, in the last video, you see me do the um, hole sensor location, weld that little boss in there. So we have the trigger wheel, which is going to be mounted over there. That's all sorted. And we did the engine mounts, which are all nice and solid with the uh, the backstop to stop the uh, engine sliding. So in this vlog, what I'm going to try and do is uh, I want to add some extra protection to the flywheel. So in this area here, I want to panel it all up with some sheet steel that I've got there. Uh, I think it's two or I think it's two or three mil thick. It's like this sort of stuff. Yeah, it's three mil thick steel, so that's proper substantial. And it's gonna add a bit more protection. It'll also keep it nice and clean that area. So I'm gonna take the axle off um, and the bearings, strip it all back to a base chassis and start getting the welder out and try and get it panelled up. So let's get cracking. Right, so on to the next step. So what I've got to do now is uh, I want to be able to have a removable protective cover that goes over the inertia wheel, um, which is going to be on this side here. Like you can see, I've, I've completely encased this now. I've dual welded everything, so it's absolutely solid. It's not the neatest, but I'm not bothered about it being neat. It's got to be solid and protective. So I've got some more steel over here, and uh, I'm going to start cleaning this metal up and hopefully weld a nice, neat uh, enclosure that can be removed with it panelled up as well. So. Yeah, let's go on some more welding. Okay, so I've just finished doing the uh, the welding up on the protective panel. Uh, it's not the neatest by any means, but it's certainly serving a purpose. So it's on the inside of the bars, and this is going to basically keep whatever goes on inside there, try and keep it inside there. Uh, the outside, I can always just panel up nice and neatly um, with some nice, I don't know what to do yet, let's use like a, a plastic panel or a carbon panel on the front, or just steel panel it up, I don't know yet. But the main thing is, that is proper encased with a good few tacks of weld, it's solid. Absolutely solid. You can't get much more protected than that. I mean, it's totally overkill, but any excuse to add a bit of weld and a bit of weight means it's gonna be more stable and more secure and just safer. So that bit's done now. What I've got to do now is cut some metal to make the bulkhead protection on the inside, then weld in some sort of a tab to allow the fuel tank to be mounted on this side. So it, it's gonna fully simulate the scenario of a go-kart. So Fuel tanks at the front, same sort of uh, height, um, and the, the pipe will go through there, the fuel pipe will go through there with the filter, exactly like you would have on a normal car chassis, so that it's a real like-for-like -like comparison. The only thing I can't replicate is the airflow, but that's just, that's just where we are with that. So, yeah, let's get some more metal cut, do the bulkhead, and hopefully we get some paint on it. So it's coming together slowly.
right so i'm not sure where we are on the video now but i've now welded the bulkhead in so you see here i've got a nice firewall here that absolutely solid uh, please do not pay too much attention to welds they are solid they're just not very neat uh, but yeah so it's that's all solid there now <sighs> so what i think next job is um i'm gonna weld this up here like that maybe a bit lower that's going to be where the tank mounts because i want the tank to be the same level as the engine like what i said before was i want to try and simulate how it is in a go-kart or a pro car i'm going to call it that uh, just give the as close i can to the uh, operating scenario so if you look at where the tank is there and the engines on the chassis it's the same sort of uh, elevation so that's what i'm trying to do on here now so uh, my tank is where is it that's the tank I'm using. So I think if I have that mounted like that, I think that's going to give like a, a real world sort of scenario of how it's going to be in situ. So it means that the fuel pump's going to be operating as it should be working. Basically, if there's any problems, you can see straight away before it put onto the car. So I'm waffling now because I'm absolutely shattered. But yeah. Let's crack on. Right, so uh, I've, I stopped filming because I was just getting a bit fed up with how long everything was taking, and um, I just found the camera was starting to hinder me. It was just just slowing me down. I was like, I want to get this done. Um, to couple that with a bit of an injury I've had off, off uh, playing football, uh, I've done my ligaments in. It's not the not the prettiest, but it's really stopped me movement, stopped me work. It's slowed me right down. So I thought, right, it's down down the camera and just get me head down and crack on with this build. So let's have a look what I've done. I've managed to finally get some paint on. I've finished all the welding. I've smoothed in all the welds um, and I think it looks a lot neater than what it was you know it's not bare metal anymore uh, this is the removable panel I'm gonna get some um, like some sort of a brush that goes on the edge here just to, just to seal this gap but still allow it to seal sort of nicely I mean it's nowhere near lined up yet I've used a an engine enamel paint I've brushed it on there's a few runs in it but um, the reason I've brushed it on is because this is still work in progress so once I've got the engine mounted i'll be working out we're going to be putting the um uh, the throttle linkage also the brake uh the brake lines i need to not work i'm going to put them so it's going to be some more grinding uh and welding to be done on this only only small amounts but if i had got it powder coated it would just be a waste of money whereas at least now i can grind the paint away do the fabricating and then touch it up with a paintbrush and you'll never know so that's why i've done it this way because it is still just doing it on the fly but i am really happy with how it's looking now it looks super sturdy. It's absolutely solid. That's without that's without the flywheel in it. But I'm having a break from this now. Um, I mean, just look at this. It's an absolute tip because I've been grinding, sanding, um, and it was putting me tied in the garage. 
when I'm in the middle of making a mess and having a bit of a reorganization. So it, it, everything's just got above my head and just tipped me over the edge. So I've down tools now. I'm going to jump in my van and I'm going to fly down to Anglesey to my caravan and have a weekend off. A few beers, nice food, good company, just a bit of chillax time. I'll be back on Sunday though to crack on with this and the next part of the vlog, which is going to be really interesting. You'll see me then start to address the, the braking system, overhaul the brakes, put that in, install that, and then start building it by, back up for the for the final time so this will be the final build and it's going to be fit and forget hopefully the dyno will be mounted into the corner with the, the pedestals the, uh, the the pads bolted into the ground and yeah this is getting close to finishing so thanks for watching and persevering with this for boring so far vlog the next one's going to be great so i'll see you on that one take care